and uh, did a lot of really neat things uh, that night. And so I just want to share just with a little bit with you guys. Uh, for those who aren't aware, we just came off a 21-day fast. Uh, it was a great time. Uh, hey, Reed, can you mute everybody except me real quick? And then when they come back for altar, then you can unmute them. There's a lot of buzzing going on. But uh, we, we did this 21-day fast. And, and I, what I want to share with you guys just real quick with this, uh, I'm going to be talking about something maybe a little bit challenging for us tonight. I don't know if you guys came to be challenged in the Word, uh, but I'm going to challenge you just a little bit. Uh, how many of you ever watched John Christ? Anybody? I wish I would have showed the video tonight. Uh, he's a funny comedian, Christian comedian. He puts out all these videos on social media. Still a lot of buzzing going on. Did you, did you mute everything? I'm buzzing? There we go. And so uh, in this video, he does this virtual reality church. I think it's, it's actually a, not a really neat thing, but it's a funny thing that he did because it would be funny if it did catch on. But what he does is he's wearing these goggles, and, and, and in the goggles, it's like, do you not want to get up and actually go to church? Just use virtual reality church. And like the first thing, you got to choose your worship leader, and like your choices were either famous, uh, full-time, part-time, or just volunteer. So, you know, you could pick like Hillsong. Or just, and then it like, you could pick whoever you wanted your preacher to be, and it even asked like what you wanted your conviction level to be. And, and conviction is like what you feel God doing inside of you, what you feel him stirring inside of you. How many of you have ever felt when you sat in a message and you were really convicted and like he's talking about me, he was talking straight to me, hopefully that's all of you. Uh, and sometimes you're like, ah, oh, he's not talking to me tonight. Well, like in the video it said you, you can pick like convicted, not very convicted, not convicted at all. Well, tonight uh, you're probably going to have a little bit of conviction because I'm going to talk about sacrifice, Okay. Sacrifice is a really tough thing. It's a challenging thing, but I want to teach us uh, how we can sacrifice and how we can do that as a teenager because my desire for you guys is to be hungry for God. My desire for you is, is to have a great hunger for who God is. And uh, the reason why I bring that up with our fast was because whenever I fasted for 21 days, uh, just doing juice and water, uh, after about a week, week and a half, I completely lost my appetite. I wasn't hungry anymore. I didn't, I didn't really want anything to eat. In my mind, I wanted something to eat. I, just the pleasure in, in enjoying to eat, I wanted to eat so bad, but my stomach shrank and I wasn't very hungry. I didn't have a huge appetite. But I was praying, I was reading the word, I was doing a lot of that, so my spiritual appetite grew very, very strong. And so what tends to happen sometimes, and, and what I want to show you guys, is if sometimes you lose your, your hunger and your appetite, I think that can happen spiritually sometimes. I, I, I would probably venture to say that some of you have experienced this. Maybe you've went to camp or you've been a part of something and you got hungry, you got on fire for God. And you're like, man, I'm going to do these incredible things for God. And you went a couple of weeks and you're hungry and you're reading. And then a week or two later went by and you got busy. So you stopped reading the Bible. Maybe you missed a couple of weeks coming to church. And then all of a sudden you don't, you're not, you don't feel like you felt like you felt before. And so it's like our spiritual appetite can shrink. It's like the more you feed it, like the more I feed myself, you know, like I ate the first chance I got, and then I ate a lot the rest of the day. I got sick from it, but then the next day I woke up and I kept eating, and slowly but surely my stomach got bigger. Hopefully it's not showing too bad yet, but my stomach got bigger, and then I just, I want to eat more and more. Like my appetite is back, and what I want for you guys is to have an appetite for God. I want you to have an appetite for it. I want you to want the things of God. I want you to be hungry for God. And I'm just going to say this, and, and that there's no way that that can happen without a little bit of sacrifice in your life. And so let me, let me make a statement real quick, because you need to understand this. Before I talk about sacrifice and, and doing things for God, I think sometimes we're like, man, that just, that sounds too big. I don't know if I can live a life of sacrifice. And can I make a bold statement and say that most of us, whether we're serving God strong or we're not, we're making sacrifices whether we like it or not. Whether they're for God or whether they're not for God, you're making sacrifices somewhere. And the thing with sacrifice, and, and to make it very clear for you, and why this is so neat to grab a hold of in your life, is anytime there's sacrifice, sacrifice will always cost something, but it will also pay in return. 
It'll cost something, but it'll pay off in the long run. Let me show you a couple of illustrations. If I, let's, let's talk about worldly stuff. If I make a sacrifice every day and go to the gym and work out, then it's going to pay off in the long run. I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to get in better shape. It, I'm going to be more healthy. So I'm going to sacrifice myself to get up early and do things. And because of that, I'm going to get results from it. All right? We like results, don't we? We're going to get results from it. Let me show you another one. This has probably happened to maybe more than one of us. It's happened to me. Uh, I remember when I was in high school, uh, I decided that I wanted to uh, date somebody, this, this girl. And so I had my group of boys, my best friends, and I hung out with them every single day. You know, we always did things together. But as soon as I decided that I was going to date her, now that's when sacrifice kicked in. So now I got to sacrifice some of the time I spent with them so that I can spend it with her. Right? How many of this has ever happened to you before? Liars. Yeah, some of you telling the truth. And, and so now you're splitting your time between hanging out with friends and hanging out with her. And, and, but the, re, the sacrifice is you have to give up time with them, but the reward is, is you get to spend more time and get to know this person, right? So there's always a, a, a take and a receive. You, you have to sacrifice something sometimes to get something in return. And when it comes to God and the things of God, we have to do the same thing. If we want more of God in our lives, listen, when I've been praying and seeking God, I've been praying for breakthrough, not just in your guys' life, but in this ministry. And, and when I think of it and what I've, what I've been seeing, I think in the spiritual realm sometimes, it's almost like a, a wall, uh, I guess I can say a, a dam holding back water. And, and it's almost like in little bitty spots where water begins to just shoot out in little bitty spaces. And it's like I'm beginning to see that this month where God is just shooting out in different areas. But I want us to get to a place to where he completely breaks through. Because what happens when he completely breaks through is he'll completely sweep through and do with us what he wants to do. But that takes sacrifice. To want more of God and to go further with God than you've ever been before is going to take some sacrifice, right? Right? You know, uh, I've, I've had people with conversations like, you know, I, I want to come to church more, but I'm just, I got to do my home, you know, I want to do good in school, I want to do good in sports, I want to do good doing all these things. And so I, I'm trying to teach you so you can see the divide there because you're like, so I don't think I can sacrifice from God, for God. So, but what you're telling me is you can sacrifice from God so that way you can achieve in the world. But we're afraid to sacrifice for God so that we can achieve in the kingdom. Because we're afraid that the things of the world are not going to do good. Well, that doesn't make sense because the Bible says that if you seek him first, then all the other things will come. Right? Remember, sacrifice and then something is in return from it. it when, we, when we go more towards the things of this world, yeah, you'll get good return. But then guess what? You're going to get bad return in that too. Because then you're missing out on every single thing that God has for you. So it's going to take some sacrifice. And you're saying, well, I don't sacrifice. You're sacrificing. Either way, you're sacrificing right now. I just want you to make a choice to sacrifice for the right thing. And so we need to get our hunger going. We need to get our seeking and, and all these things in our lives. First Peter 2 says this, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. It says, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you'll grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. And so the scripture, it seems so easy to me because, listen, if you have tasted that God is good and you know that God is good in your life, then I, I don't think I see the big deal. I don't think I see the comparison here at all. I would think that within myself and even with you guys, that we would choose to go more this direction and start sacrificing for the kingdom of God, but believing and having faith that God's going to help you in all these other areas in your sacrifice. See, some of us, we, we need to learn how to sacrifice maybe some of our time. This is hard for me. You know, I, I thank God every day that I have a job that I can come to where I can sit with my kids not around and I can just seek his face and worship, Right? You know, for Rhonda, I don't know if she's in here, that's not as easy for her for her job. So you know what she does? She gets up at 5.30 every day, and she goes and prays for two hours. That's a sacrifice. 
But listen, just wait till you hear the testimonies this year of what God's doing in our life right now because of those sacrifices. You begin to see the payoff from the sacrifice. And so we have to, we have to figure this out. We, we know that we need more of the word. We know that we need prayer. We know that we need worship. We know that we need his presence. But we have to figure out what can I do to sacrifice and what is that going to look like or, or am I even going to make the choice to do that? Malachi chapter 114, this is a very hard scripture, and uh, I, I want you to hear it, and I want you to take it to heart. It says this, it says, Cursed is the cheat who has an acceptable male in his flock and vows to give it, and then sacrifices a blemished animal to the Lord. For I'm a great king, says the Lord Almighty, and my name is to be feared among the nations. And so here, you know, uh, this, this, is, this is totally different from us because back then in the Old Testament, Jesus, you know, he didn't come yet. He wasn't sacrificed for us on the cross. So they actually had to take animals and they had to sacrifice their animals for their sin. There had to be a blood sacrifice, a blood offering for it. And so, so the Lord is speaking and he says, listen, uh, he says, I don't just want any of your animals. I want your best animal, the best one that you have, the one that you've named, <laughs> I want the one you named. The other day, Tom made rabbit. And I was like, really? And then I tasted it, and I was like, man, this is the best thing I've ever eaten. Like, because Tom is a great cook. But then I knew that, you know, they raised rabbits, so I was like, what was the rabbit's name? And they said, oh, we don't cook the ones we name. (laughs) So this was an unnamed rabbit, so it was okay. And so anyways... And, and so, so God wants you to take, he wanted him to take the very best one, and that's what he wanted to sacrifice to him. And, and you know, like I said, Jesus has done this for us, but so it's not so much what God is wanting us to sacrifice as animals or anything like that. He's wanting us to sacrifice our lives and who we are and to give it to him. But the question that we have to ask ourselves is, are we taking the best of who we are, the best parts of our life, and are we giving that to the Lord are we just finding those little bitty things that, oh, it's not so much of a big deal, and I'm going to give this to God? Like, which ones are we giving to the Lord? And this is the question he says. He says, he says for I'm a great king. Is he not a still a great king? I still think he's a good king. I still think that he's worth every single thing that I am and everything that I have. And, and so listen, this is what I want you to see is, you know, I, I, I think today more than anything that God doesn't so much look at, at this or that or this or that as he's really looking at your heart because right here in this passage, he's asking for something. And, and what, what the person's saying is he says, I don't want to give you that because my heart is not in the right place to give that to you. Like, that's too much, and, and my heart's not there, and so I, I'm not going to give that thing to you, but I, I'll give you this, God. I'll give you this part of my life, but, you know, I, I just don't think I'm there yet. You know, you think of the, the rich young ruler, maybe some of you have heard this parable in the Bible, the, the rich young ruler comes to Jesus, and he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, well, you need to do all the commandments, and he says, well, listen, I've done them all. I'm, I'm good. I've done every commandment. And then Jesus says, okay, then I want you to take all your stuff, all your possessions, sell them, and then give all your money to the poor. And the Bible says that he walked away sad. It said he walked away sad because he knew that he couldn't do that. And so the question I've always asked myself was this, did did Jesus do that just so that man couldn't have eternal life? What do you think? Do you think Jesus is like, you know, he doesn't really deserve it, so I'm going to pick the one thing that he can't give up, and I'm going to call him out on that thing, and then that way he can walk away sad. Listen, I don't think that's what Jesus' intentions were at all, because I believe that we serve a God that has our best intentions in mind every single day. So what he was doing is he, it wasn't really a challenge like, like, listen, if you don't go sell all of your stuff and give it to the poor, you can't get into heaven. That wasn't what Jesus was saying at all. Jesus was checking his heart. He says, listen, it sounds like you're full of a lot of pride and you've done all of these things and you're doing really well with them. But let me check your heart real quick. Are you willing to give this up and come follow me? He says, no, I can't do that. See, now it becomes a heart issue. It becomes an issue of the heart, like, can I, do I really love God enough to give him my life? Do I really love him enough to sacrifice things so that way I can fall more in love with who Jesus is? 
See, these are, the, these are the hard questions that I feel like God is asking us tonight. And, and, and like I said, I know this isn't an easy message, but it's a, it's a good one because if you grab a hold of this, man, God can, can pour out an infinite amount of blessings upon your life. Because what is sacrifice equal? When you give up sacrifice, there's always something good to follow it every single time. But we have to decide and we have to make that decision up in our lives if we think that we can do this. Let me skip a little bit in my notes. And uh, just just a a quick testimony uh, that has to do with sacrifice. Because to me, sacrifice is always giving up something. It's, It's giving up so that you can obtain more of God. And whenever I first started going to church, maybe, uh, gosh, a year and a half, probably a year and a half into when I got my, gave my heart to the Lord and started going to church, uh, I was there every single day, every time the door was open, on Sundays, twice on Sundays. Sunday morning, Sunday night, I went to church, and I was just getting everything that I had from it. But on Wednesdays, uh, at the school I went to, I mean, I had only graduated, I was a couple of years out of high school, and they had Wednesday night open gym to where we could go in and play basketball with all my old buddies, uh, not to mention the old guys that I drank with and partied with. Yeah, they were all there. And so I would go and I would hang out with them. And, and then, you know, on, on Sundays I would go to church and I would be loving Jesus. And then on Wednesdays I would do that. I mean, I love basketball. This is what I love to do. So uh, I was like, I, I don't know if I can go on a Wednesday night, so I'm going to go play basketball. And then my pastor, I started a young adult class, and he says, listen, I, I want you to start coming to this Wednesday night thing. And I said, but you already come Sunday morning and Sunday night. You really think I should be there three times a week? <laughs> like three times to church? You keep saying yes. <laughs> well, in my mind, as a young man, I'm like, I got some other things that I need to do as well, so uh, I don't know if this is best for my life. And uh, I just began to think about it. I actually went to a conference to where God challenged me to give him all of who I was. And so I was like, all right, I'll do this. I'm going to stop playing basketball and I'm going to go to church. This was the biggest sacrifice that I've ever made for God to that point. And so I did it. I started going. And uh, the neat thing about that was uh, in that young adult class was the first time that I ever taught. He asked me to teach. And so I was like, yeah, sure. Me and Rhonda had started talking. That's where we met. That's where I met my wife was in that young adult class. We started talking. She thought she could beat me in basketball. That was really funny. And, uh, and so I beat her. And then she's like, oh, I can beat you in tennis. And I was like, yeah, that's funny too. So I took her and beat her in tennis. And she's not in here to defend herself. I don't know where she's at. But I destroyed her. And this will go on YouTube that I destroyed my wife in basketball and tennis. I destroyed you. And so anyways, it was a great time because so, I got to meet her. So she's like, yeah, let's teach this class together. That's, that'll be great. And then so she just made me do it by myself. She didn't help me at all. But I felt it, right? You know, after Megan shared her testimony, she, she sent me a message. And she's like, I just felt my call and I felt the anointing. And that's what I felt. I was like, man, that felt so good to teach, Like, I'm the shyest person that I've ever known, and this was the funnest thing that I've ever done in my life. I want to do that again. And so I asked, and he let me do it again. And then I was like, he's like, hey, why don't you take up offering on a Sunday morning? I was like, that'd be so cool. I'm freaking out because I'm getting up in front of people, but I took up offering. You know, I prayed out in front of everybody for the first time until a point to where he asked me to preach, and I was like, yeah, that would be awesome, and I did it, and I loved it, and I fell in love with it, and if it was, if I never made that sacrifice to give up basketball to go to Wednesday nights, I don't think I would be where I'm at today, because that's where, I, where the sacrifice paid off for the calling of my life, and, and so we need to see this in our lives. We need to see that in the sacrifice, when you sacrifice to God, there's always reward in it, and so Romans 12, uh, 1 says this, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true, proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. And so God calls us as a living sacrifice. Everybody say living sacrifice. This is what he's calling us to be. He wants us to be a living sacrifice to him. And so the one thing, and and I mentioned this a couple weeks ago that I think is so good in this passage, is he says, in the view of God's mercy. 
Okay, so sacrifice seems very difficult. It seems challenging until you understand this aspect of it. That when you view sacrifice in the mercy of God, then it doesn't, get, it doesn't seem hard anymore. It then begins to seem like, okay, this is something that I should do. Because mercy is not getting what you deserve. And the Bible says that all, all of us are sinners and we deserve death, right? And so that means that what we deserve, every single one of us deserve death and we deserve eternity in hell. But Jesus came as the ultimate sacrifice and died on the cross for our sins so that we can now receive grace and mercy and not have to receive that punishment that we deserve. And so, okay, so the person that is asking us to sacrifice for him now is the one that sacrificed and died for us. If you remember in the garden when Jesus was praying, it says that he, he actually sweat blood because he was in anguish over what he had to do for us. It's like, listen, this is too hard. I don't know that I can do it. And then he began to remember something that if I do this, no matter how hard it is, there's going to be a payoff. There's going to be a reward. And that all of my children can now come to the Father through me and they can spend eternity in heaven. Listen, that's a big deal for us tonight. That's a huge deal. And because of that, it makes it easy now for me to say, okay, I can give up my time. I can give up my friends. I can give up this in my life. I can give up going to play basketball on Wednesday nights. I can give up this. And guess what? It's going to be worth it because now I get to do what my father is calling me to do. Because he poured his mercy out on me. And so instead of thinking about how hard it is to do things for God, begin to view it in God's mercy, change your perspective, and begin to think about that daily. Like, listen, I get to do these things for God because he did all these things for me. Listen, i got to hurry up. This, the second thing in this that I think is so good is it says to offer our bodies. To offer, it, it, it's, it's a pretty big deal. To offer something is not uh, to say, oh, well, you know, God, I, I would give this up. But I'm just not sure. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it, God, if you say so. That's not offering your body. You know, it's like when somebody calls you on the phone and they say, listen, hey, I'm, I'm broke down. Actually, I got, I got a call, or somebody told me last week that they thought Keenan was out of gas somewhere on the road. So my first thought was, I need to call Keenan, see where he's at so I can go help him, right? But how many of you, none of you probably have ever had this happen, but maybe you got a phone call and they said, hey, my car's broke down, can you come help me? And if it's somebody that's close to you, it's usually, yes, I'm on my way right now. Maybe, maybe you've driven past somebody on the side of the road and you're like, somebody else will help them, I'm going to keep going. Like, I don't have time, I don't, I don't want to sacrifice right now. But to offer is to be that person that stops you immediately and goes and helps. To get off the phone and says, listen, I'll be there as soon as I can. That's to offer, to offer yourself to do something. And this is what God is wanting out of our lives. He's not wanting us to, to complain about, oh my gosh, God, listen, I can't believe Josh is talking about sacrifice tonight. Why does he always talk about hard things? Like, I just want to come to church and hear things about God and sing a few songs. And I just want to go to school and be with my friends. But gosh, why, does, why do we got to know to offer is to say, God, listen, I love that you're asking me to do this, and I'm ready to do whatever you ask me to do. Give up my friends, sure. You know, the cool thing about that is when God asked me to give up my friends, guess what he did? He provided new friends, because sacrifice always has an, a, a reward attached to it. So if God's asking you to give somebody up in your life, then guess what? Then that means he has somebody else for your life. So a sacrifice isn't this big deal because, like I said, it's something we're already doing anyways. We just have to decide who we want to sacrifice for, and hopefully it's for God. Let me show you one more thing, and then I'll be done. First Samuel 15, 22 to 24 says this, But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as much as obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of ram. So you're thinking, okay, well, you just told me I'd sacrifice. Now you're reading a scripture that says that sacrifice isn't a good thing, that I need to obey the Lord. Well, I want to show you how they go hand in hand and what God is really looking for out of your life. And see, God wants us to be obedient to him. God, God, God isn't so much worried about what he's asking you to give up. He's more worried about if you're willing to say yes. That's what he really wants. He wants you to say, yes, God, I want to do this for you. 
That's what he wanted from the rich young ruler. He, it, it wasn't about what he was giving up. It was about whether he said he would do it or not. It, he, he wanted his heart in a place to where you say, God, I will do this for you. Second John 6 says, and, and this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. Have you heard from the beginning, his commands is, is that you walk in love. Here's one for not obeying. Joshua 5, 6 says the Israelites had moved about in the wilderness 40 years until all men were of military age when they left Egypt had died since they had not obeyed the Lord. And so they, they, they wandered around the wilderness and because they weren't willing to obey, they didn't get the promise that God had for them. Listen, sacrifice equals promise. It equals rewards in your life. Listen, I, I think the Bible is so neat for you guys and I hope you guys read it every once in a while because it's full of promises of God for your life, but it, it's always attached to a sacrifice. It's always attached to a sacrifice. I hope and I pray, and, and, and you know, maybe I'll do a teaching over this someday, that the, one of the greatest things that you guys will ever do as an adult is to tithe, is to give to God. And that's a sacrifice. Wait, when you get older and you get bills and you have a house, and you, and you, especially at the end of the year when you do your taxes and you get this piece of paper that says that you pay tithes this much, and you're like, oh my gosh, I could have done a lot with that. But God blesses you for doing it. It's a sacrifice, but there's a reward. And, and so there's a, there's a thousand of these in the Bible you read, and God says, listen, I'll do this for you, but you got to do this. I'll do this for your life, but you got to do this. And we're searching the things of God, hoping he'll just do the great things for us without the sacrifice. But God wants you to be obedient to his word, so that way he can bless your life. This is what his desire is for you. You know, in, in Genesis 22, and, I, and I'm just going to kind of I tell this story just a little bit. Uh, it's a story of Abraham and Isaac. How many of you have heard this story or read it? Abraham and Isaac, okay? So Abraham, uh, God calls Abraham. Isaac is his only son from his wife. You know, there's other sons there and daughters from concubines. That's, yeah, that's weird stuff. But then there's Abraham and Sarah, and they have Isaac. And so God goes to Abraham and he says, listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to sacrifice. I want you to kill your son, your only son. And, and, and so the question is, is, when you read in the Bible, what, what was his response to that? Was it, ah, God, you know, what about one of my concubine sons? Or, you know, God, you sure? Is that really what you want? No, he said, okay. And so what he does is he goes and he gets his son and he gets all the wood and, the, and everything that he needs to prepare an altar to, to put his son on there. And he's got the knife and everything. And guess who carried all that stuff for him? His son. Like, me and Rhonda were talking about this other day. Like, nobody really knows how old he was. They, some people say a teenager. Some people say maybe a young adult. But man, the, the kid carried his stuff to his sacrifice. And on the way, he said, he says, he's like, Dad, listen, I see the, the rope, I see the wood, I, I see that you have a big, long knife in your side. But he says, where's the sacrifice at? Abraham's response was this, God will provide. He says, God will provide. This was before God provided. He says, God will provide. So he's like, so they keep going, they go up the mountain, they get to the top of the mountain, and he prepares the altar. He puts Isaac on the altar, he gets out his big old Texas knife, and he goes to stab his son, and the angel of the Lord comes to him and says, Abraham, stop. And he's probably like, <laughs> He says, stop. He says, because you've been obedient and you've done what the Lord has asked for you. You don't have to do this anymore. And then Leslie talked about this scripture last week that in the, in the thorns and the curse, and there was a ram in the thicket. So he got him out and he was able to sacrifice. And the thing that is so neat about this passage is because Abraham was obedient with one son, now he is the father of nations. Now he has millions of sons and daughters. But without his obedience to sacrifice, he would have never gotten that in his life. He would have never gotten to where he was supposed to be. So listen, it was never about Isaac. You're like, God asked about Isaac, but it was never about Isaac. It was about whether Abraham would say yes. 
And so you need to understand this in your life that if you want good things from God, don't worry so much about what he's asking you to give up. Worry about if you're going to say yes to him. Because when you say yes to him, sometimes he won't even make you give it up. He'll provide something else for it. But every single time, it doesn't matter if you do have to give it up or you don't, he's going to provide something. I think the neat thing about this passage is, and what it shows us is God wants to make himself real to us. How many of you want to know God more? Hopefully you all raise your hands. The only way that you'll ever know God more in your life is through sacrifice. If you don't ever live a life of sacrifice and you only do enough just to get by, if you just are that Christian that says, yeah, I just want to go to church, you know, and sing a couple of songs and, and be with my friends and then go home and do whatever I want. If you want to be that Christian, that's up to you. That's between you and God and, you know, you might slip into heaven and that's great. That's, that's fine. But you'll never be the father of nations. You'll never, you'll never be in a place in your life where you're an influence over this whole city. You'll never be in a place in your life to where God can take you and use you like he's never used anybody else in history. So if you want mediocre things from God, then keep giving him your blemish sacrifice. But if you want the greatest things that God has for you, then give him your best. And then guess what? In the process of that, you get to know who he is. Because Abraham didn't know God as his provider. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know all the Hebrew names for God, but I know provider is one of them. I don't know how you say it in Hebrew. I'm not a Hebrew scholar. But I know up to that point in the Bible, nobody ever called God his provider. And so now all of a sudden we read and we can, it can grow my faith and I can see, oh, God's a provider. That's so cool. But it's so much different when he actually provides for you. I can tell you about all the great things in my life that God's done and what he means to me. And that will encourage you and probably build your faith and be like, oh man, I want to I do great things for God. But when you decide to make a sacrifice and do great things for God, then he becomes that to you. And it's, it's, it's on a much better personal level than just hearing it from me. If I would go back to tithing, if, if some of the worship team wants to go ahead and get, come back up here. Uh, you know, this is just an easy illustration for me. Uh, I shared this testimony at Huffman on Sunday morning. It's really neat because when me and Rhonda first got married, and listen, next, next month, everybody keep paying attention. I don't want to lose you. Next month is February. We'll probably start talking about some relationship, you know, stuff, you know, trying to help you guys in some of those areas. Uh, but whenever me and Rhonda first started dating, one of the things that we did that we should have never done is we decided, well, we want to get to know each other. So every bit of money that I had in my savings account and the money that she had, we spent every single bit of it going out to eat and going to movies and doing all this stuff. So when we got married, we didn't have any money. We didn't have anything left in savings because we used it all trying to get to know each other. So listen, we'll talk about that next month. And so when we got married, uh, I wasn't making a lot of money. We're paying rent. We're doing all these things. And uh, we didn't have a lot of money. But the one thing that we always did is we paid our tithes. Every single week we, we would go to church. And sometimes we didn't have it. We would pay it anyways. And our bills still got paid for. You know, uh, everything still worked out for us. But the thing that we weren't able to do anymore was we didn't have kids. We should have been living it up. Like, man, I have kids now. I'm like, gosh, man, I wish we could have lived it up more when we didn't have kids. Because now we can't go anywhere without paying somebody to come watch our kids. And so we weren't able to do anything. We're like, God, well, actually, this wasn't my prayer. Listen, God listens to Rhonda better than me. And so if you really need something, go to Rhonda. No, I'm just kidding. But she was just praying. She's like, God, listen, I want to go on a date with my husband again. I just want to go out. The, one of the things we love to do is to go to the Olive Garden. Yeah, I know that's not that big and fancy, but that's what we like to do. We want to go to the Olive Garden. We like to go to the movies. And so without even telling me or telling anybody, Rhonda prayed. She, made, she prayed this prayer. She said, God, I want to go on a date with my husband. But we didn't have the money, but we were paying our tithes. And it wasn't but two weeks after that, she didn't tell anybody. We got a, a, an envelope in the mail, and in that envelope, there is a gift card to Olive Garden for $30 and a gift card to the movies for $25 with nobody's name on it. Nobody signed it and said, hey, we just wanted to bless you. None of that. 
came to our mailbox. Listen, that's mind-blowing. That means that we serve a God that loves us so much because we are willing to sacrifice and still pay our tithes and do what he asked of us, was able to convince somebody to put some stuff in the mail just to bless us because he loves us. So don't tell me that God doesn't reward your sacrifices. He rewards it every time. So everybody stand to your feet. Listen, I'll be honest, I don't even know how to, to close this out tonight. I know that this is something that God wanted to speak. Like, I feel this more than a lot of messages that I've ever felt, that God is truly calling a generation to sacrifice. Listen, do you, if you want to break strongholds in your life, if we don't want to be a generation that has this label over us of de depression and anxiety and all these things, this is just all this generation is, if you want those things broken, you need to just make a decision that I'm going to start sacrificing for God. And those things will break. The, the little holes that are poking through the walls... I think the, the reason why the Lord was showing me that is, is I was seeing that as a whole a minute as a ministry, but I want you to begin to think about that as your life personally, because listen, what the Lord is showing me right now is it's almost like he's poking through little holes through our flesh and through our wants, and he says, listen, I'm getting out a little bit, but he says, I want to break through all the way in your life. He says, I don't want to just bless you a little bit. I don't want just a little bit coming out for you. I want the whole river of heaven flowing for your lives. But all you got to do is take a brick and get it out of the way. Begin to take your flesh and get it out of the way. And then you'll begin to see the blessings of God flow through you. But you have to be willing to sacrifice. So I want everybody to just bow your heads and close your eyes. And this is going to be the simplest altar call that I've ever had. And this is all we're going to do tonight is we are going to present our bodies as a living sacrifice to God. And all it is is obedience. Maybe when you leave, the Lord will say, I need you to do this. I need you to give this up. I need you to give this up. And it's going to be a lot harder out there. But you're going to have to say, okay, Lord, I'll do that because I want rivers flowing through me. And so as, as whenever I say go, I'm just going to say go, and they're going to worship. And if you want to present yourself as a living sacrifice to God tonight and say, I'm gonna, I want to sacrifice at a level that I've never done before because I want the fullness of God in my life, then I want you to come to this altar and then I'm going to pray over all of us and we'll be dismissed. It looks like they're done over there, but I don't care because God's doing something right now. And it's time for you to make a decision if you want to make a real true sacrifice in your life so that you can experience the fullness of God. So I, I'm just going to do this. One, two, three, go. If that's you and you want that, I want you to come to this altar. Whether you're a student or an adult, I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. I want you to pray. I want you to worship. And I just want you to say, God, I want you to take everything that I am tonight.